All right. Hey, everyone. Uh, so yeah, as Maggie said, today I'm going to be talking about the business glossary in Data Hub. So talking about these glossaries, what they are, and how you can, how you can use them for your team's benefit. All right. Before we get more into specifics, let's tackle first things first. What even is a business glossary? A business glossary is a place where organizations can centrally define and organize assets uh, through terms that are used by the business. The goal of the glossary is to create a single source of truth when it comes to industry, field, or company specific terms, phrases, or acronyms, as you can imagine. There can be a lot of those. Uh, when everyone is aligned, you can leverage your business glossary on Data Hub to organize data assets using the shared vocabulary. The days of misunderstanding a metric or phrase are long gone, I'm happy to say. And now you can accurately describe different assets within your organization for your business needs. Not only will your business terms be less ambiguous when describing your data, but by assigning terms to different assets, you're also grouping them together for discoverability. You can easily see all the different assets assigned to a term by just checking out the terms page and seeing all of its related entities. I'll go more into details about this and other specific use cases as well in a little bit. Uh, but now that I've hopefully sold you on the importance of a business glossary, let's go into some specifics around how to create a glossary on Data Hub and get it working for you and your needs. So yeah, creating your glossary. Uh, there are two ways that you can create a business glossary in Data Hub today. First, ingest your glossary via a YAML file with your terms and definitions, or you can create it via the UI. So YAML-based ingestion for your glossary looks like this snippet here. Uh, you define the structure and fields of your glossary and then ingest using the data hub command line tool. Ingesting via YAML file has the benefit of checking in code and tracking your changes through uh, to your glossary through version control like GitHub. Uh, however, it may be less accessible for non-technical users as you can imagine. Uh, all right, and then creating through the UI. Uh, this involves going to, uh, to your glossary and data hub. And from here, you can create terms and term groups to organize terms under. Uh, simply click the menu and open a modal to create as you can see in some of the screenshots here. In contrast to creating your glossary via YAML, creating through the UI may be more accessible for non-technical users, but doesn't give you that benefit of tracking changes through version control. Uh, but it is a lot easier to make small changes, ad hoc changes, all that sort of stuff. All right, so now that you've actually gone through the work of creating your well thought out business glossary, let's talk about adding your terms to different data entities. So there are several different ways you can go about accomplishing this, including through the UI on an entity's page, using the new CSV feature that was just demoed by Aditya. Thank you for that, Aditya, great demo. And using transformers. So first, adding through the UI. Uh, adding glossary terms to entities through UI is as simple as finding the entity you care about. You gotta go to its page and then just click the add term button as you can see I've circled in green. In the modal that pops up, you can then navigate through your glossary and select the term you want, which is easier now than ever it was before. Another option that I mentioned before is adding terms to entities with your new CSV ingestion feature. This allows you to set multiple terms, do more bulk actions uh, just by setting the entities and providing earns. Uh, I did you just went over this, so I'm just gonna kind of move on by and not waste your time. And then finally, you can use transformers within your ingestion recipe to also add terms when ingesting your data. There's a few different options that we provide out of the box here. Uh, so first you can add terms to all the data sets you're ingesting like transformer number one or you can specify data set name patterns to uh, target spe only specific data sets that you want, like transformer two, or you can specify specific schema fields that you want uh, to add terms to as well, like transformer three. Finally, you can always write custom transformers to add glossary terms however you'd like, uh, but these are the three that we provide right here. All of this is as well documented on our docs site. I would definitely check it out. If you guys have any further questions, I put the link here, uh, but also ask questions in Slack. Cool. Now that your glossary is all put together and data assets are tagged with terms, let's talk about a couple different use cases for the business glossary in Data Hub. Uh, for our first use case, imagine you're in an, uh, at an organization that has different KPIs that are important to different areas of the business. Previously, a KPI was just a concept that you were supposed to just kind of know, and you knew it was relevant to your data and your organization, but you weren't really sure where or how. Now, with Data Hub's business glossary, you can actually have a material presence of what was previously just a concept. Not only is it a real entity that you can reference, it's actually with your data alongside it, not just in Notion or Google Docs or somewhere else out there in the ether. With this comes the ability to easily see all assets relevant for this KPI all on the same platform. Curious about how your company calculates return rate? First, you can look at the agreed upon definition of the term itself, like in screenshot one here. 
Then you can see all the data sets and charts used in calculating or graphing this KPI and the related entities tab, all on the same page. Now that that's what I call real visibility into a concept that's so important for a business and measuring its own goals. All right, next. Uh, for another, maybe more specific example, let's think about a situation where you have sensitive data flowing through your system. Uh, for this scenario, I'm actually going to do a little demo for you guys to show a couple new features as well. So oh, let me move this thing. Okay, cool. <clears throat> so you know you collect the address of some of your users, and you're curious about this. You know you have an address glossary term, and you want to know more. So you can navigate to your glossary and find this address term that you care about to do a little bit of investigation. I know address is under personal information. You could have always looked here and found it. <clears throat> so now we're at our ad address page. Uh, this term page is actually going to tell you exactly what an address is. So you, at least you know what you're talking about street addresses here and not something like an IP address. So we're reducing ambiguity here already. From here, you can also see the source of the def definition if you wanted to go check that out. That's a new feature that we added back that was previously lost. Um, and then you can also check out the related entities tab and see all of the different entities that have been tagged with this term. Here, we just have a couple customers, raw customers. But when thinking more about this term, you realize that address is definitely sensitive information and you should be guarding it with care. But you also know that you have another glossary term, sensitive, that could be of help here. So I'm going to go to this related entities tab. And now, for the first time, you can actually control different contains and inherits relationships through the UI by adding different terms to link them. So in this situation, I know that address is sensitive, and I'm gonna say that I wanna add, add an inherits relationship between this address and say that it inherits from something that I know, another term that I know we have, sensitive. Let's add it. And boom, there we go. It is now inheriting from sensitive, but, not only this, you can actually go to the sensitive term page uh, and check out its related entities tab. And here you can check out one, not only all the entities that are tagged with sensitive, but also all the entities that are tagged with the terms that directly inherit from this sensitive term. As you can see, address we just added as inherits from sensitive. So now all the address entities also show up in related entities for sensitive. Email is another one that had been previously added as inheriting from sensitive. Um, so now everything is all in one place and you can have a much better understanding of what your data is, uh, how it all interacts and how it relates to different information types and different classifications within your system. And actually that is it for me folks. Thanks for listening. As per usual, if you have any questions, please reach out on Slack.